Hello everybody, how is everybody doing? I hope we are all fantabulous. Anyway, um, some stand-up today. Paul, er, I heard this a bunch of times too, Paul Chowdhury. It's, it's just kind of one of those things that I would say Chowdhury, but that ain't it. Paul Chowdhury. We're going with that. Anyway, um, pretty extreme. A short little clip. This guy's beard has grown a lot, especially the stash area, like the end of the stash area since I saw him on Taskmaster, which was just recently, a couple days ago, finished season three. Uh, boy, was he bad in it. <laughs> God. Just a mess. But anyway, um, out of all, every, every season is going to always have that one person that's just the worst. <laughs> and in his season, it was him. So that's all I've seen of him. Um, I completed the season, but that's just it. Five episodes of Taskmaster, and that's all. And uh, and the way, you know, Greg took a liking to him and stuff just to make fun of him. And it, it was fun. But the way he was on Taskmaster, I can't really imagine what he would be like, at, either in stand-up or in anything other than... Because it was, it was like... It was such a character and it was just like I don't know <laughs> it's hard to explain but like I cannot imagine especially <laughs> especially since it's called pretty extreme um I have no idea what what kind of energy or anything this man is about to have but let's find out what, what better way to find out than hit and play so let's go <laughs> say your name Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters. He did not. Welcome to the conversion. <laughs> uh, just grow a bit of a beard. You've got a nice beard there. Dave, how long did that beard take you to grow, man? Nine years. Nine years. <laughs> I grew this on the walk up. <laughs> We're hairy people, innit? Have a look at her. <laughs> She's pretty fit. I've got that kind of like straight out of Syria look. <laughs> I've got that one way ticket look. <laughs> Doesn't help though, because I get a call from my agent the other day. Hi, Paul, uh, Newsnight have called up. They want to talk to you about what it's like um, being a Muslim. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, not Muslim. <laughs> no, but they want to talk to you about what it's like growing up being a Muslim. Yeah, uh, I didn't grow up being a Muslim. <laughs> yeah, but they want to talk to you about all the Muslim things, and the things you did about being Muslim, and all the things you could do being a Muslim, or it's like being a Muslim. I said, well, I need to find a Muslim comedian to talk about this kind of stuff. I'm the wrong person to talk about this kind of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't worry, Paul, they'll for find someone else. It's only a thousand pounds. I said, you know what? Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Inshallah. It affects my life. I mean, I remember when Westminster Bridge happened. I got a notification on my Facebook account. Hi, Paul. Can you uh, mark yourself as safe? What? All right. Hi, guys. Paul Chowdhury here. Just let you all know I'm safe. I was in Scotland at the time. <laughs> what was my alibi? But Paul Chowdhury... <laughs> Guess what? I got three likes. Technically, I just survived a terrorist attack. I got three bastard likes. <laughs> I would have got more likes if I died. <laughs> oh my god, he's dead. Like, 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 like. like. <laughs> he survived. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> in fact, the terrorist who died in that attack got more likes than me. I looked on his page, he got six, seven hundred likes. I was so pissed off, man. I just pressed unfriend. <laughs> That's the problem, this is affecting my life. I remember, like ISIS, they claim everything now, innit? Uh, we did it. <laughs> no, you didn't. George Michael, we did it. <laughs> Harambe, we did it. <laughs> well, you killed a gorilla in America a year ago. We had a similar situation in London, didn't we? Gorilla busted out of the cage in London Zoo, started walking about and shit. Because we don't kill gorillas in this country, they got rights. Start walking, they can't do shit to me, brother, innit? <laughs> What are they gonna do, cuz? You know what the gorilla did? Walked into the kitchen and drank 16 liters of undiluted Ribena. I 
have no idea what that is. That is some gangster shit right there. <laughs> you ever try to drink a glass of undiluted Ribena? That'll finish you off straight. He's like, if I'm going out, I'm going out with diabetes, isn't it? <laughs> you can't do shit to me, cuz. In America, they just remember that Haram, the kid dropped in, people were out. Oh my God, they shouldn't have shot the gorilla. They should have shot the parents. It's a good idea, isn't it? Let's shoot the parents. Now the kid's got two dead parents <laughs> and he's living with a fucking gorilla. <laughs> Swear, ISIS ain't helping anything. They're, this is the whole thing. I mean, I know it must, must be hard for the police to find these kind of culprits in this country. There's a guy responsible for London Bridge attacks. His name was Quorum Bat, right? This guy, this guy was responsible for London Bridge and he was in a TV show for Channel 4 last year called The Jihadis Next Door. He had his own TV show. <laughs> he was in a TV show called The Jihadis Next Door and the police were like, we didn't have a clue, mate. <laughs> He's the jihadi. Hang on a second, mate, we didn't know his location. He was next door. <laughs> the bastard just told you. <laughs> Doesn't help with my look either, I tell you though, you know, like, this is the whole thing. We can, like, I can't even get into America anymore. You guys know what I'm talking about, innit? <laughs> and this is gonna sound racist, but when I travel, I ain't traveling with you lot, man. <laughs> I'm traveling with Dave, Sharon and John over here. <laughs> and Jemima and shit. That's who I'm traveling with. Last time I tried to get into America, I got Dave and Dave goes, I said, how are we gonna get in? He goes, just say what I do for a living, mate. We'll both get in. All right, mate, yeah, all right. Just, just copy me and we'll both get in. Dave gets to this, they go, so, so what do you do for a living? Dave goes, I work in recruitment. Go right through. <laughs> Dave! Dave! You prick! <laughs> You've been a great crowd, thanks for your time. Cheers. <laughs> what yeah. pressure! Man, for a comedian to have like five minutes to make just a crowd laugh as much as they can, because that's obviously the goal. I just, I feel like I just, just pressure. <laughs> I don't like pressure. I work horribly under pressure, actually. Um, I constantly get made fun of because I work really badly under pressure. Like, um, my boyfriend always says that. Just, it usually, it usually comes up in video games because there's not a lot of, you know, situations where pressure is a factor. But um, when we're playing just any kind of game and stuff, <laughs> he always says, all you have to do is hold the joystick. Three seconds, breathe in, breathe out, and we'll win. And I find a way to mess it up because it's too much pressure. <laughs> Every time he's always like, all you had to do was breathe in and you fucking sneezed or something, you know? <laughs> like, how did you not get that right? And that's basically, yeah, that's me. I, it's just, I hate being pressured, man. <laughs> and I hate being rushed. I have a brother that all he does is rush me all day. Rush, 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 man. Urgh, it frustrates me and it makes me do things. And also, it, it, like, it doesn't matter. Like, he rushes me to get to work or whatever. And I'm always the first one there, even though I'm the one that lives furthest away. But he rushes me all the freaking time. And sometimes he'll rush me and, like, what, what? If I'm driving from point A to point B and you rush me, at the time I get out, how much difference can, I, can it make if I actually rush if I'm gonna still have all the same red lights, all the same intersections, all the same, like every, the, there's speed limits, people. Like everything the same, but I'm rushed. I'm in a bad mood, I'm rushed. And when you drive rush, you make risky calls. Don't act like you don't know, you know, it's risky when you drive rushed. And what, I'm gonna save like five minutes tops? So it's not worth it. And I hate driving rushed, I hate being rushed and, um, I, I learned the hard way. I'd done some risky shit while driving just because my brother was freaking rushing me. And uh, I just, I literally got there the same time I would have gotten there if I hadn't really rushed. So I stopped doing that, but he still rushes me and it just pisses me off. I hate that and I hate being pressured. I'm horrible under pressure. 
just I don't know. Some people are really good under pressure too, and and um, I envy them <laughs> because that would be nice, wouldn't it? But um, I just I I don't. It's weird to me that some people get like comedy slots that are when when he came out he he came out right it was that's the start like it's weird to me that you, you shows can book a comedian for five minutes that's bizarre like it should be minimum 10 15 but five minutes is just like i don't know i feel like it'd be really tough on a comedian just pressure man um well that's my rant for today <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, this guy is uh, weird. He he mentioned, he touched on a lot of topics. He mentioned a lot of things I'm not familiar with at all. But generally, it was funny. Uh, why not? I'm much more energetic than I thought he was going to be. Uh, very different from what he portrayed on, on Taskmaster. So that's fun. And um, I kind of want him to say his name because all I've ever heard is is greg davis say it and i don't know if he's saying it right because <laughs> he says it, it sounds weird when he says it but anyway um there you go what does this say hold on the russell howard hour i don't know who that is but i was just kind of curious anyway um there you go thank you you guys are awesome i'll be around and uh goodbye <laughs> see it's pressure i'm bad at